Okay, so for this assignment, guys, you are going to depict a brief scene from *Of Mice and Men*. You need to include one piece of dialogue with uh, at least one quote from the text. You need to choose two characters or at least two things to have on the screen: uh, people, animals, or things. You need to have the characters interact. You need to select an appropriate background. And we will continue with this project after everyone has mastered all the basic concepts of coding. This is your first time that you're ever using this, so you're kind of learning everything here at once. There is a rubric here um, that's going to be used to grade you. You need to have the story elements uh, effectively integrated with at least two characters, like we said, in the background. You need to have a clear purpose for your project and uh, you know, make sure you have all the design organized. You have to show me you understand programming, and through this process, you're going to have to show me you are a problem solver. So interact with me and other students in the class and collaborate with us to try and find solutions to anything you're struggling with, okay? That's a huge part of this, this um, assignment. So I'm just going to take my already put together very generic scratch assignment here and walk you through it, and you can follow the same, but choose different backgrounds and have different interactions. But here's the basics. So here's my, my character. You're going to need to choose you know, two characters and maybe something for the background. So new sprite is where you go for that. Um, I chose my character from people and I looked for D. I didn't look for him, that's just who I picked. So there's D. I would click on him. Uh, I picked a tree. To find the tree, I went to new sprite, went to things, and I found trees all the way down to the bottom. Well, it's like one of the last things. That, there we go. And you click on that, and then I found mice under animals, and I just picked the mouse because it's of mice and men, right? So there's your mouse. So I picked those three sprites, and now I need to program those. Um, before I, I did that, I also went over here and went to backdrops, and I picked a blue sky backdrop from my little image thing here. You can pick all kinds of different things. And then I'm choosing to have him actually go somewhere after I click on the mouse, move some more. So I picked a second backdrop. Just went here and looked for something that was foresty and put that backdrop in here, okay? Now let's script out our person. So scripts are up here, costumes are here, like how many things you like, whatever you want them to look like. Sounds are here if you want them to talk. But here's your scripts. So we'll stick with just the very, very, very basic basics today, okay? So as far as the very most basic, basic, basic script for him, First, you want to just drag in from events, one click. So we know that when you click on the flag, he's going to start in a certain point. You have to set that point by the go to and wherever he's standing. So you have X axis and Y axis, right? So I picked 196 negative and negative 80 for Y. So he starts out standing at the beginning of the slide there, okay? Now, before we go any further, again, that's, that's what I picked too is his go-to thing. But then I decided I wanted him to say three different things. So to randomize things, go to data and make a variable. I'll call it maybe choice three or something like that. Hit OK. Now, those things that you have here are going to be what you use to help you choose your variable up here. Um, drag over set choice, and I just have choice one. So drag that over and it goes to zero. And in that section where it says to zero, we're going to put in an operator. We're gonna put this equal sign in here. Um, and uh, we'll fill that in. Or sorry, I lied. We're gonna put pick random in here. Sorry, it's going trying to go too fast. Pick random, drop it in there. And I'm gonna have him pick from three random things. So I put one to three, okay? And connect your go-to there. Now we're gonna do these if-then statements. We're gonna to go to control, Find if then, drag that over and drop it in. Then the if and the then is going to need an operator. That's why I was going too fast. That's going to be our next part here. So you drop in this equal sign and then go back to your data. And if choice one equals, and we'll put the number one, then he'll say the first thing. So I put in, I know that George told me to go and be somewhere safe, but I can't remember where. Okay, so that's the first thing he's going to say. Then I dropped in my wait two seconds so that stays on the screen for two seconds, right? You can build these blocks separately, or if you want to be kind of like efficient like I am, hope to be, um, I would just duplicate it, and then you can 
take that block and drop it underneath and then just change the information on it to you know two and three so i'm going to get rid of that though oops delete and then get rid of all that stuff so i already you know duplicated and made three of these blocks and for block two i followed that same process of pulling in that operator of equal pulling in choice one but then i changed the number to two right and then made him say something different. To get your say, make sure I talk about that. Got to go over here and get say and put in to say hello. You can change that to whatever you want it to say. So for this one, I put that if in the choice equals one. Say, wait two seconds. This one choice one equals two. Right? And he says something, wait two seconds for this one. If choice one equals three, then he'll say this third thing. Where am I? Where do I go from here? Maybe. I should ask that mouse, right? Give me two seconds. So you can see that when I click on the flag, where should I go from here? Maybe I should ask that mouse. That's one thing that he says. I know that George told me to be somewhere, so you can see he's randomizing what he says, right? Now, I also have when the sprite's clicked. So when he's clicked, it's going to do something. Go to events, and when the sprite's clicked is there, right? What's he going to do? Well, he's going to glide. I want, to, want him to kind of like float over to the mouse. So he's going to glide, and then you have to put in the coordinates. This is where I got confused when I first started coding here a couple weeks ago. Um, you have to put in the coordinates where you want him to go. So that 47, negative 45 is the coordinates up here. See how it says X and Y down here? X and Y, X and Y. So you want him to go up and be near the mouse to talk to him. You want him to wait one second. So you can pull that from up here because you want the – what he says to stay on the screen. And I put, hey, do you have any information about a good place to hide for two seconds to stay up there and then just wait around for a second to see what happens. So let's see if I click on him if that's what happens. He walks over. Hey, so that works, okay? Now your next thing is the tree. Well, I want a tree in there just because there's a tree in, in a mice and men and he goes, hides in the brush. So um, I picked that one clicked. So whenever the flag is clicked, when we start, you're going to set it to size 75%, right? We're going to try and make it a little bit smaller. So if I play around with this, let's just say I make it 70, right? Shrink my tree a little bit so you want it to fit in there. And it's going to go to its coordinates right here, 185 and negative 5 in the Y axis. Okay, so it's going to appear there. As far as the mouse goes, when that sprite's clicked, again, I got that from here. He's a sprite, right? Sprite's clicked. He's going to go to over to those coordinates right there, right, 94, negative 62, and say, this is a great place to hide, follow me. So drag and drop that say down there. Then under control, he's going to wait one second. Then here's the part that's important. He's going to broadcast the hidden pond. So he's going to, something's going to switch to a hidden pond. So I clicked here um, and found broadcast. Broadcast is what sends a message from one thing to another thing to happen. And we're going to go back to our backgrounds here in a second, and I'll show you how this works. So throw that broadcast in there, then make it wait five seconds or however long you want to, and then have it say something like, I hope George gets here soon or whatever comments you want. So when he goes over to the mouse, the mouse is going to say this is a great place to hide, follow me, and then it's going to switch backgrounds. How did the background switch? Well, that's where this broadcast comes into play. So we go to backdrops, right? And then to make a broadcasting happen, you got to, pick when I receive, right, when I receive, and then pick a new message. And I typed in the hidden pond because that's where I wanted him to go. And then what's going to happen when you receive the hidden pond? Well, it's going to switch backdrops. So I switched the backdrop to, and then there's, you know, winter or whatever other background you would enter. And now that works. So let's try all this. Um, well, by the way, I have two backdrops, right? I have blue sky and that. So let's go ahead and re-click the flag. So there he is, he's talking, right? Saying, where, where do I go from here and all that? Let's go over to the screen place, follow me. And he switches over. Okay, and uh, if I was to click him, he'd walk over to the mouse and talk to the mouse. Yeah, above, good place to hide. So that's that. Uh, again, you have a rubric. Make sure you follow all those pieces that I gave you. And again, make sure that you have dialogue, that you have... Um, two characters that you have appropriate background and uh, again to pick backdrops just click up here i think that's pretty much it so good luck and i look forward to seeing your awesome project